what is a cervical kyphosis. Understanding the basic structure of the spine is important when we're describing the anatomy or the position of the spine. And the first thing we want to understand is that the spine is, is made of, of bones stacked upon each other, and these bones are called vertebra. And these bones are also separated by something called intervertebral discs, or like they're like spacers in between every bone. So you have a, a bone, then you have a disc, and you have a bone on top of that. And these bones um, are, are designed to support the weight of the body, deal with compression forces, but they're also designed to help protect the spine spinal cord and nerve and provide for flexibility and movement of the spine. The spine also has natural and healthy curvatures and this is what makes the spine so strong. The spine is not designed to be completely straight from the side. It's actually designed to be curved, but from the front, it should be completely straight. And these curves allow it, allow the shape of the vertebra and the discs and the shape of the spine to absorb stress, absor absorb um, compression, and also be flexible during movement doing all this while, in addition, protecting the spinal cord and nerves. So when we look at the basic sections of the spine, we understand that the neck is what we refer to as the cervical spine. The thoracic or upper and middle back is described as the thoracic spine, and the lumbar spine is the low back. And when we look at each of these areas, there's different curve or normal curve types associated with them. First of all, we have to understand that there is some natural shapes that should exist. There's two words that people get confused a lot, and that's something called lordosis and kyphosis. And a lot of times when people hear the word lordosis or kyphosis, they can only think of it in a negative manner. That means that it's a negative problem. But the truth is, you're, there are normal lordosis and there's normal kyphosis. A lordosis is when the spine bends towards the front of the body, and a kyphosis is when the spine bends towards the back of the body. And you have excesses, an excessive amount of either one of these curves it will be called hyperlordosis if you have too much lordosis or hyperkyphosis if you have too much lordosis. Now each curvature or each section of the spine has its own no, own unique shape. The cervical and lumbar spines are supposed to have lordotic curvatures meaning bending towards the front of the spine and the thoracic curve, it should have a kyphosis, meaning bending towards the back of the spine. And these, the shape looks like an S, you know, bending in the front towards the neck, bending towards the back and the mid-back, and then bending towards the front and the lumbar spine. And what this does, it actually acts like a spring as there's compressive force as a result of gravity or movement. Um, this, these, these curves allow to absorb the forces properly, while, like I mentioned, protecting the spinal cord and nerves, and the discs also play a role. Now, what is, when, what is a cervical kyphosis? When somebody says they have a cervical kyphosis, it means that the spine, instead of having a normal lordosis in the neck, meaning bending forward, it actually bends in the wrong direction. It actually bends in a kyphotic shape, meaning bending towards the back as opposed to bending towards the front like it's supposed to. Now, when people also refer to kyphosis, they can also mean they have hyperkyphosis of the mid-back or the thoracic spine. That means you have excessive kyphosis in the thoracic spine, but that should be called thoracic kyphosis but, um, or thoracic hyperkyphosis. But a lot of times patients will say, I just have thoracic kyphosis. Uh, you can also develop a kyphosis in the lumbar spine, I meaning the spine actually bends backwards in the lumbar spine. And instead of having that normal lordosis, it bends backwards. But typically a cervical kyphosis means when there is a kyphotic curve in the neck where there should be a lordosis. Now the problem is the symptoms of cervical kyphosis can be very widespread. Now, a lot of times you can see some postural key differences from a normal person who has a lordosis versus somebody who does. And the classic thing is forward head posture. The head tends to be forward. Now, it doesn't always have to be, but it, it could tend to be forward. And they, you know, this could be called that tech neck type of presentation where the head is forward relative to the torso, relative to the shoulders. Also, the upper back can be more rounded. Now, that's true if it's excessively rounded in the upper back patients can have more likely to have a cervical kyphosis. But the opposite is true. If somebody has too little kyphosis in the mid-back, meaning hypokyphosis of the thoracic spine, their mid-back is very flat, they can also develop a kyphosis in the neck as well. So both extremes can lead to the same problem of a cervical kyphosis. They also tend to have a lack of range of motion or stiffness in the spine. Um, that tends to be associated with cervical kyphosis, but there can also be other symptoms that are just not just postural. The, remember, like I said, the cervical spine or the bones of the spine protect the spinal cord and nerves. And when the spine moves out of alignment, it can compromise the nerve tissue and it can start causing pain and malfunction of those nerve signals. So it can lead to pain in the neck, it can lead to pain going down into your arms, ridiculous type of pain. It 
it can be a common problem of headaches because not only will a cervical kyphosis can possibly affect the nerves that go through the spinal cord, it can also affect the vascular supply because as the shape of the spine changes, the shape of all the tissues around the spine also change too. So the spinal cord becomes stretched, the, the, the arteries become stretched to decrease vascular supply to the brain leading to headaches and migraines. So the, there can be a lot of widespread symptoms as a result of having a cervical kyphosis in the spine, not just neck pain or not just range of motion or not just posturally. So if you know you have a cervical kyphosis and something, this is bending in the wrong direction, this position predisposes you for lots of future issues because if the spine's not in the right alignment, it's going to abnormally go through some degenerative findings. So it predisposes you for future degeneration, future disc issues, future neurological issues, future vascular supply issues to the, to the head and, and neck. So it predisposes you to many, many future issues. So if this is something that you know you have, it's something that you don't want to leave uncorrected. Cervical kyphosis can lead to serious concerns uncorrected. So correcting the, the cause, which is restoring the normal lordosis back into the neck, restoring that normal lordosis as best as possible is done effectively by doing a structural rehabilitation program that addresses that addresses the shape not just the symptoms of cervical kyphosis meaning if you have a little bit of neck if you're having some neck pain or some stiffness and you just do some things to improve flexibility but the shape of the spine is still incorrect it's still going to continue to progress and cause these these, these degenerative findings over time and lead to more serious issues left uncorrected. So what we recommend at Scoliosis Reduction Center is that if there is a structural misalignment, especially in the cervical spine, where it's the closest to the brain, can affect the most nerve supply to the body, we affect restoring that cervical lordosis as soon as possible and, and maintaining that cervical lordosis for you know, lifelong. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.